The right always loved to scare monger about a so-called war on Christmas. And whilst it's a funny meme, for example, the Tidegung's Minister Hoffman assures me that the Nationale Volksarmee will be valiantly waging the war to its victorious conclusion. The meme has no basis in reality, and the example of past socialist states actively disproves the idea that the left is secretly conspiring to take away your turkey dinners and your Christmas trees. Of course, this is the Christmas special, and I talk about the GDR, so let's take a short and light-hearted look into how it celebrated the holidays and some Christmas traditions under socialism. Also in the spirit of the holiday, I'll give a few shout outs to a few smaller left tubers for you all to watch and support. So to get straight into it, the GDR sought to highlight the socialist values inherent in Christmas, particularly peace and goodwill to all people. The season was therefore able to take on a far more secular character by emphasising community spirit, peace and love, as well as all the achievements of the socialist system in securing this for its people. This is not to say that religion had no role to play, although it must be said it was much lesser compared to that in the West. 7 million out of a population of 17 million did still identify as religious in the GDR, and the church held sway over obviously a lot of their lives, as well as being a hub for reform groups across East Germany. The churches ran Christmas services as per usual. A common theme was reflecting on the hardships of the Christmas of 1945, and how far the German people had come since then by their own strength and their own reconstruction. In the GDR, Christmas was a time to come together and aspire to further societal progress rather than just to engage in rampant consumerist culture which the season has sadly come to represent. Many traditions were also continued across the GDR. By the 1980s decoration had been stepped up to a new level from previous decades as the city to record to be lit up with festive lights and Christmas trees adorned most squares across the country. The famous Unter den Linden in Berlin was often said to be the best decorated with lights and holly in every store and it was the road of light leading up to the Christmas market at the Marx Engels Platz. There, there was a carnival with all kinds of rides and games, food and drink, as well as stalls with gifts to buy from all sorts of traditional craftsmen. Classical and patriotic music played on the speakers to set the scene and posters declared socialism's achievements such as Soviet advances in space technology. Before the war went up, policemen were more than happy to take pictures with Western tourists, as one American journalist wrote. Gifts were also exchanged between West and East through Vest and Ostpakete throughout the Cold War. The GDR's crafts being particularly popular, whilst the West had its much greater amount of consumer goods. The Christmas spirit, therefore, crossed political and ideological lines during years of extreme tension. Although not as opulent as the West by any stretch, Christmas was still openly and publicly celebrated in the GDR. Celebrations were also just as prevalent at home, and I'm going to be referencing one family's story here from Dresden. Families decorated their apartments on the first day of Advent, Advent with a Christmas pyramid, Rauka mention, and tablecloths. Incense made the home smell like fir trees, gingerbread, and frankincense. Kids also began their chocolatey countdown to Christmas with an Advent calendar, and then, on Christmas Eve, a tannin barn would be put up and food bought for the night's feast. Viennese sausages were a particular treat. Once this was done, the family would settle down for a Christmas movie. Some favourites were Weinax Gans Augusta, the tale of some children saving a goose from being made into a Christmas dinner, and Jiraya Hazelnusser for Ashen Brudel, or Three Wishes for Cinderella. Both were made in the GDR and remain classics to this day across Germany and Eastern Europe. Whilst the film was on, Dad would sneak out, and minutes later a knock would come at the door. The children would run up, and there would be Santa, asking if they'd been good this year, which of course, Santa already knew. After getting the children to promise to be better next year, he would hand out the presents and swiftly leave. There were obviously plenty more children out there, he had to see overall. Minutes later, Dad would return, slightly upset that he missed Santa, and would open their presents before enjoying their Christmas dinner. The kids were left excited to meet their Oma and Opa the next day and hoped that Santa had left them something too. This has been the briefest of brief overviews of how socialist states celebrated Christmas, but it's just to ram home the point that, well, they did celebrate it. We as socialists today can draw messages of solidarity, peace and love from holidays, whereas capitalism aims to commodify and commercialise them, alienating us from the importance of quality time with friends, family and loved ones in favour of a relentless pursuit of profit. 
we can stand against this and turn the war on Christmas into, a, into one of a war for its true values against what the capitalists have done to it. With that being said, if any of you do have any fond memories of an East German Christmas, I'd absolutely love to hear them in the comments below. But now I'd like to share the love and shout out a few of my favourite up and coming communist content creators. Firstly, The Partisan. He makes excellent content on a whole range of topics and is starting an exciting new series on the international brigades in the Spanish Civil War. Also check out his videos on Titoism, their race. Secondly, my German comrade, Hawkless Talks. He's recently just done an episode on LGBTQ plus rights in the GDR in a funny and informative style. He's also aiming to look at the D DPRK in future, so keep your eyes peeled. Finally, a new lad called Socialist Quick Fix and his superb, fair and well-researched video on Socialist Albania. I certainly learned a whole lot and his channel and he's his other channel to keep your eyes on. I reckon you'll put, I reckon you'll go quite far. But with the shout outs done, it just leaves me to thank you for what has been an amazing first few months on YouTube. I've learned so much and it means so and it means so much to me how you've all been fully embraced me into the community. Um, and I've made so many new mates through this and just had so many great chats with so many people. An extra special mention to Paul Morin, of course, who's been a top lad through it all and obviously spoken on his streams a few times. That just leaves me to say that to the workers of the world, to all faiths and none, I wish you the very best of Christmases and a holiday season. May it be red and merry, and may you take this time to rejuvenate yourselves for great new struggles for peace, prosperity, jobs and socialism, and hopefully much more positive 2021. I'd like to take this opportunity as well to thank my, uh, my growing army of patrons. Firstly, the Held the Arbeit, uh, and those being Deep Red, Deep Red Wine and Awu. The Vanguard of the Working Class, of course, and a salute to you all for your support of the channel. And also to the party comrades as well. Lemon, ah, uh, that's a long way, longer name. Lemon Moran Cush, Vincent Schultz Matthews, and Berrimans. Thank you all for your support, and all the best. Goodbye.